Look at what we got there. Yeah, that's our sprinter. Started. This is day one. Well, it's probably like day 30 because we've done so much freaking research and uh, shopping for vans. <clears throat> well, we got the van yesterday and we're starting to take out these quite beautiful aluminum racks, may I add. They're just not useful for us, so it's just a bunch of screws. <clears throat> Unfortunately, they have used self tapping screws to go into the chassis. We we're hoping to use uh, cross nuts or rivets so we didn't have to create more potential corrosion points but it looks like they just put a, a whole heap of screws all over the place uh, so we'll have to patch those up with anti-rust when we get to the next stage but first let's get this out of here there's a little bit of rust throughout the van but nothing that's really major but obviously this floor has been a big thing that we've been wondering since we bought it so let's see how she is underneath Decently good to tell you the truth. It looks like they have protected the flooring a bit so there doesn't seem to be rust. There is oil from where there was a leak, but obviously the oil actually protects uh, the paint. So the ground looks good. I was uh, hoping we wouldn't have a hole, and there's no holes, so. It's not bad because most of it's actually just surface rust. So we're using a little drill bit here some steel wool and we're just going to try to scrape all that off so that when we apply our anti-rusting coating uh, it's going to protect that from further oxidation. Not too bad though. Uh, we're still prepping the floor. Uh, we've got all this stuff over the last few days and now we got to prep the floor to put on some core 15 which is an anti-corrosive material. It's just good to put that down there because they're going to be laying a floor we just want to make sure it's protected. Uh, so into the future we don't have any rust problems underneath there. So we're going to use some uh, metal primer, rust stripper. Uh, we're going to spray that on there, let it that 15 minutes, rinse it out, let it dry completely. Uh, and then we're going to put on some 450, which is like a black paint that completely protects from the against rust. Let's go. properly making sure we found all rust spots. Um, we found a few different uh, surface rust spots that we feel like we need to take care of before we put some paint on top of this. Uh, so we took off all the panels, we sanded it down, we washed it, now we're going to put some metal prep on there and then we'll put some nice uh, rust sealer on there to really protect it uh, in the long term. Okay, we finished some of the fiberglass repair around the van uh, to make sure that we don't have any water leaking in. Uh, today, we are going to be doing some of the flooring. Uh, first, we're going to put the panels back on the side of the vehicle. We're going to clean them out, put a little bit of silicone to make sure water doesn't get in there in the future. Uh, we're then going to cut up uh, some of the XPS boards, which is our rigid insulation. And we're going to start laying it into the little canals of the van. Uh, we actually have to do some sound deadening. So we're gonna put these uh, 
sound deadening mats all around the van in these exposed areas. And what that does is going to reduce the sound from the outside, like wind vibrations, stuff like that. So you can hear what this sounds like. And if you're down here where there's some sound deadening, you can hear how, how much more quiet that is than this. So we need to put a lot more sound deadening all the way across. And to do that, we actually need to take off the headliner because that's one of our biggest sources of sound is going to be from the oncoming wind when we're driving at 100 kilometers an hour. So we need to take this headliner off so we can access that area, put some insulation in there, put some sound deadening in there. So we're going to go do that right now. So if you're like us and you don't have the proper tools to take out the headliner, what I've just done this one and it tests out pretty, pretty good is I've taken a flathead, very fine point flathead, and there's a little silicone lip up there. And you're just gonna stick the flathead up there and then you're just gonna lightly push it down so that the actual clips stay on there. You're not trying to disattach the clips from the bottom headliner. I've seen a few other people just grab from here and try to pry it out. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna break the bottom part of your thing. The last step to do to take off the headliner is to just disattach this panel piece right here, just slightly so that we can lift it out. Uh, if you have a modern uh, printer, just make sure that you be careful because they have the side curtain airbags here. Ours is old, so ours doesn't have it. Uh, so all I'm doing right now is I'm just gonna stick my flathead in there and just pry it slightly like that. And all we do is that first little pop out so we can then move this whole headline around. So we're now taking off the headliner. It's actually completely disattached, but I don't want to pull it out right away. Because uh, we actually can do most of what we need to do uh, just from having it lower down right here. So we just need to put a bit more sound deadening. So as you can see, with the sound that sounds like the sound deadening. So you want to stop that loud sound. So we're going to put a bit more sound deadening here. Uh, we're going to wipe it down and clean it a bit. And then we're going to start putting some insulation mats in here. So that when we push it back up, it'll be nice and insulated and lots of sound deadening. Today we're going to get started on the insulation of our van. So yesterday you saw us put down our subboard. So before we put the final floor on, we want to obviously do a bit more inside. Because uh, we don't really want to scratch up our, our nice wooden floor. Uh, so we're going to do insulation. And for insulation we've chosen Havlock Wool. Uh, so this is a sustainable product which goes along with our sustainable travel book. Uh, and it is just as good as almost anything in the market. Other than here we're going to use a spray foam or rigid foam. Uh, now you saw us use rigid foam. And that is because we don't want to use uh, the catalog on the bottom because most of the way we saw people install it is that they, they create uh, strips, uh, bearing strips in the bottom and they place little squares in there. And what that does is it creates a thermal bridge where the wood is where the hot or cold is going to bridge right through the wood. So there's actually nothing insulating the wood itself, but that's a pretty low R value. So because we wrote the buttons to the ground, we thought probably the best when there. Uh, we are going to be putting in the catalog on the sides and the ceiling. Alright, now so for us, there's really only two options when it comes to using uh, soft pads to insulate your van. One of them is Havlock Bolt, which we've already told you about, and the second is Thinsulate. Uh, Thinsulate is a uh, insulation that's created by 3M. Uh, it's very good, uh, uh, it's a very well made product. Uh, unfortunately, you can't really get that in Canada. You have to order it on eBay uh, from the States and ship it up. So it's not so the next next option is how long wool. We didn't want to go with fiberglass insulation or something like that or any of the other materials because they all have pretty clear the outside and should be moldy or the fiberglass gets scratchy. Uh, so that's why we tried to do how long wool. Uh, so right now we're just going to rip this open, uh, let it expand a bit, and then we'll show you a bit about the insulation inside. Okay, this is a pro tip right here. Don't try to cut the whole Havelock wool with the scissors or your fingers are gonna hurt and it's not gonna be very convenient. So Oksana has figured out her strategy, which is make an initial cut and just slowly tear it all the way down. We were trying to cut through the whole thing before and it does not work very easily. So Max has now started running string along the ceiling to hold in place the pieces of wool that we're gonna put up there. Okay, so we started uh, putting the insulation up. Uh, and we left it overnight and we realized that some of these fell down, especially as we drove the next morning. Uh, so we looked online to find out what we could do to stick them, specifically the window section. 
And there's three options that came up. Uh, the first one was to use an adhesive spray, uh, 3M90, 3M77. Well, we picked up some stuff from Canadian Tire here in Canada. The second option was to use strings. Now strings doesn't work, it works well for the smaller areas here, but we were still worried that maybe if these became damp that they would sink in down to each other. Uh, the third option was to maybe sew it on with some rigid foam that we have and try to stick it on. We decided to go with adhesive spray because the Havelock form, a lot of people said they've been using that with success. Uh, and so far it looks very good. It actually almost looks like it works better uh, because it sticks to the back side. So there's two sides to the wool. One's a little bit finer and one's a little bit more fluffy. Uh, so we're putting the, the, the tougher side on the other side and the fluffy side on the inside. And what that allows us to do is actually puff it out a bit. So what I've seen a lot of people do on YouTube is they stuff as much insulation as they can. And that's not what you want to do with wool. Uh, this is R7, and it's supposed to be two inches, and no one has more than two inches in the side of their van. So what you're supposed to be doing is you're supposed to letting it breathe and, and actually keep air in there for your insulating factor. So what actually works out pretty well is that once it sticks, you can almost puff it out so that it actually gets that, that full two inches. Uh, and it's a lot better than it was before. So we finished running the cables. Uh, it only took us about an hour and a half, or maybe two hours tops. Uh, we definitely thought it was gonna be more intimidating. Probably the most intimidating part was to actually cut the first wire because you just spent a lot of money on all this wire and you don't wanna make a mistake measuring. Uh, but yeah, it actually was a lot simpler than we thought. I think the reason that is, is because how we have structured our electrical layout. Uh, we have decided that we are going to have two separate DC fuse boxes and then we fed that through with this very thick six gauge wire. This means that rather than running all of our wires from the very back of the van, up to the bathroom, up to the lights, uh, things that were, sent, that were centrally located here were all running from this fuse box. Uh, and there's four cables. Uh, there's one that's going to go to a little bedside AC outlet, one that's going to go to our fridge, one that's going to go to our water pump, and one that's gonna to go to our bathroom uh, dome fan and light combo. So we have four things running through right here. And we'll actually label these tomorrow. And then from the other fuse box, uh, we have two running down here. And the first one is to a electronic drawer, which we have right here. The next one is for our putt lights. So it's gonna run all the way down here. We actually have some more cable. It's gonna right run here to low light switch, come back. We actually already run it inside the tracks all the way up here and then that's there uh, and then the last uh, DC outlet that we have or DC thing is just another uh, desk outlet right here which is just gonna be DC outlet oh and then the last one sorry is the max air fan so we run that here goes all the way up to the back underneath the channel we use some uh, split loom here to protect the cable even though it is Anchor duplex wire, which is very well protected, uh, and it's going to come right here. And then this is where our max air fan is going to go, and and that's it for wiring. All right, today is fan install day. We got our max fan deluxe. Uh, these things are in short supply right now. Uh, they are extremely hard to get. They are sold out everywhere. Uh, we were able to find one that came into stock quickly on Amazon. Uh, and then it got delayed, and it got delayed, and we didn't know if the order was going to be cancelled, but it arrived early, which is great because it was really holding us up uh, with our planning and what we we're going to do with the ceiling. So super happy that it arrived, but obviously uh, a little bit nervous that we're going to have to drill holes into our van today. But it should all work out. I watched a few videos. It seems pretty straightforward, so let's go ahead and go do that. All right, now I'm just putting some uh, rust uh, preventative paint on there, a little primer, just to protect the edge that I just cut. Uh, pro tip, you don't have, if you have the spray paint version and not actual paint, just put it into a little bucket and then you can dab with the paintbrush from there. Our second fan arrived, so because of our little F up where we decided to put an elevator bed exactly where our fan was. Uh, we got another fan. Uh, it's another Max Air Deluxe. Uh, pricey on the wallet. Uh, but we're pretty happy it's here. And today we're gonna be installing it in the classic position that people use in the Sprinter, which is right here. 
which is the easiest place to place it because there is a perfect area to cut out here where you don't have to deal with any ridges, which means that you don't even need super thick butyl tape like we had to get before. So super easy installation. We finally got our windows from Sierra Lawrence. Uh, we're going to be installing two back awning windows. Uh, into either side of the back, and we're going to be installing the back door windows, so four windows total to go along with the two fans we currently have. That's a lot of holes in the sheet metal, which is always a little nerve wracking when you do it. Uh, I wasn't too worried when I did the fan ones, I don't know why. This is a lot bigger of a hole, so it's a little more nerve wracking, but I'm sure it'll be fine. Uh, I've watched a few YouTube videos of what people do because Sierra Lawrence does not send you some nice instructions on how to install it because they're a commercial company and uh, they are not a consumer facing company. So uh, let's get to it and let's install these windows. Skidding. So last you saw us, we had decided to use some wall paneling, the whole wall and ceiling. Uh, but after watching some more YouTube videos, we had some concern that maybe the, uh, the wall paneling would be strong enough on top of the ceiling. So we wanted to go with something a bit more sturdy. Uh, we really wanted to do wood. We had a family cheap wood, and we did some more research online, uh, and we realized that the wood that they sell at Home Depot, at Lowe's, at Rona, at all these different places that's actually listed as one by four wood is actually 0.75, so it's three quarters thick, which is the thickness we wanted, and it's three and a half inches long. I don't know why, but that's what they do. It really messes you up. So the wood is actually thin enough for what we want. So today, we, yesterday we bought 50 different planks. Uh, we're going to cut them up for our length, and we're hopefully going to get to cut them all up, sand them down, and maybe get to stain them. So we'll see how far we get. Yo, off, on. Oh, did you say warm light? That's not good to work in. What about cool light? <laughs> oh, is it too cool? Let me just slightly warm it up for you. Oh, that's lovely. So lovely. Oh, 50%? What about 25%? What about 100%? project ahead of us today. We're putting up the side walls. So we've just brought over all the shiplap, um, which is the wood that we purchased. It's a tongue, tongue and groove style wood. We brought Naughty it over pine. from the storage. Naughty pine. And it's ready to be put up. And just like that, one wall is done. Moving on to the next one. We finally have a task. I'm allowed to do things. 
What are you doing? I'm painting. What are you painting? A wall. What is the wall made out of? Yeah, shiplap. And what is the shiplap made out of? Wood. What kind of wood is it? I don't know. Is this 20 questions? So this morning, Max is putting on a second coat of paint. It's supposed to be my job. But? He seems to be better at it. But? And I'm sore. <laughs> Yesterday we did the first layer, first coat on both the plywood and the shiplap. So today it's going to be a second coat and then the walls will be done.